on the cloud. Welcome everyone. Congratulations, first of all, for all of you being named a champion. We are very excited to have you here. We're conducting two onboarding. Today is one, so half of you have joined today. Half of the group will be joining us tomorrow. And some are still joining. So before we um, go ahead, I will show you this particular document. This will be quite useful because you will be getting to know each other through this document. You will be also taking some notes for yourself so you can come back to this document yourself six months down the line. Um, and this also has some housekeeping. It will take some time to introduce our co-facilitator and people who will be working with you in the next four months. But any week where we say you have a call, you would be sent a document like this. You would always have a Zoom link for joining. We have a housekeeping just an obligation to let you know that all calls we, re we record so that people who cannot join are able to watch it afterwards. The videos which are public uh, will be shared on YouTube and will always let you know which part is being recorded. Any conversation you would have in breakout rooms will not be recorded. In that, those places, you can also keep your camera on or off depending on how you're doing, how if your space is right for that. We will be using breakout rooms, and there's a different thing that we do for breakout rooms. Sometimes some people prefer written um, interaction for whatever reason, they're not able to speak, they can't speak, they are in a place where um, it's very loud or they're just not today in the mood to speak. So you can choose to use a written response or you can have a spoken version where you just go to a breakout room and you talk to people. In order to let us know, I would ask you to edit your name. Um, and you can do that by finding three dots on the top of your particular square on Zoom. And add W in front of your name if you prefer written discussion, or S in front of your name if you prefer spoken discussion. We'll come back to this again when we do actually do this, the breakout room. But if you are listening to me, and if you have figured it out what we mean, please edit your name to add W or S to indicate your preference. Today, we will be just getting some time to talk to each other, uh, learn about each other. And uh, most importantly, I will show you different things that we will be using. Um, so there is an Otter already running. So if someone has actually requested for a translation, which is in English, I don't know how good it is, but I'm going to allow that. OK. Um, so you're introducing yourself. The document will follow on and um, there is a part where I would also say we have a code of conduct and participation guideline. If there is anything during this call or any time that you feel that you need to report, anything that makes you feel uncomfortable, please email me, Bernice or Yo or Taj, who's also in this call. Uh, you can reach out to us by team at vros.org or you can reach out to us individually, whatever you prefer. And with that housekeeping, I'll go ahead and get started. Again, welcome again to this webinar. Uh, we will be doing a bit of getting to know each other, getting to know about the program. So if you, if I haven't congratulated you, congratulations once again for being recognized a DRI EDIA champion. The team you will be working with includes me. I am Malvika Sharan. I am a director of OLS which used to be called Open Life Science, but we stick with OLS now. Um, and we are in the ninth program, which is what you're joining, which is why it's called OLS 9. We have in the call Taj, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen so Taj, you can introduce yourself. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Taj Bikin Wadabi. I'm currently based in Nigeria. I have a PhD in computer science and technology, and I'm the program manager for the Catalyst cohort. For the Catalyst. Yeah. We'll have a chance where we will actually introduce you what those programs are, just so you know how they are related to your work. We have also Shayun in the call. Shayun, are you able to speak? Sure. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, sorry. Not Shay. I was asking Shayun. Sorry. Oh. We do have a person called Shayun. So, uh, Sharon, can you speak? Or if you want, you can other. Do I see you? I don't see you. Okay. 
if you if you can please introduce yourself in the chat yeah i can hear you okay very so quietly name, though yeah so my name is shion lefemi and i am a resident fellow with the ols i'm supporting i'm the dri track or the dri track rather thank you great and then we also have in the call I'm going to share my screen and uh, have the mic pass to Brasili. So before I pass the mic to Brasili, Brasili uh, Higino is one of the champions, but she's been working with us for a very, very long time, probably before even OLS was launched. And she would be working as, a, an, as an expert consultant, working between the team of uh, champions and the mentor. So I'm going to stop there. Brasili, I see you joined. Please do introduce yourself. Hey. Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Graciela. I'm based in Coquitlam, the west coast of Canada. I'm still to learn the original uh, land acknowledgement for all that. Um, but I'm here to support uh, <laughs> you, the, the champions and OLS, and to make this a great experience for all of us. Uh, feel free to reach out if you want to chat about open science about ecology, <laughs> anything really related in this area. Thank you, Graciela. And then finally, Olu is here from BRA. Um, Olu, please introduce yourself. Thanks, Malvika. Hi, everyone. My name is Olu Abaseki. I'm the project manager. I'm a project manager with uh, the Digital Research Alliance of Canada, uh, who's actually coordinating and uh, funding this awards. Congratulations to all of you. We're really glad uh, to have you. And uh, a big thank you to Malvika and the OLS team for providing this uh, training. It's going to be an awesome experience I, I can see already. So it's good to be here. Um, I, sh I definitely will be meeting you all soon because uh, there's another um, internal session that's been scheduled for you. But uh, just a big welcome to everyone, and I hope you have a very productive session with OLS. Thank you. Thank you, Olu. So we will be your contact point going forward. So of course, just again, reminder, Taj, Seon, and I will be working from OLS side. Graciela is connected very nicely between you and us. So she would be your right contact point if you need to ask any specific question and Olu would be the person uh, from the RA side. So that brings me to what is, what is even OLS? Why am I here? I never applied for OLS program and have been put in here, which is what I want to address today. So OLS is an, a nonprofit organization which is dedicated to capacity building and diversifying leadership and research. We are working in this area of open science for over five years now. We are based in the UK, but as you heard, our team members are international. They are based in uh, Nigeria, in Kenya, in Mexico. We are very international community, as you would actually start seeing as you are joining our Slack. Our, in, uh, our internal motivation has always been about pushing the research practices towards more accessible, inclusive, and equitable approaches. We are, well, I'm one of the founders of this program alongside Yo Yehudi and Bernice Batu. Um, we connected on the fact that science can only advance if all researchers share their work with others. And when we say work, not just the paper, anything including processes, different kinds of output and experiences of being a researcher. But the problem is that researchers are often skeptical about sharing their work openly either because they lack experience or they're not supported to do open science in their work. And also when you actually start adopting open science, it challenges everything. It challenges the status quo that requires us, that requires people around us to question why are we doing the way we do things? And it's no longer okay to say this is the way things have always been done. Open science requires us to actually challenge that and move forward with a little bit discomfort of changing the things. Of course, you all have heard about scooping. You all have ha, have been probably discouraged to share your work if you're not confident because you would feel judged or whatever that might be. We completely understand that and we are trying to work towards how we can work openly without being scientifically vulnerable. 
how can open science be leveraged in our benefit and not in our detriment? Which is where we uh, founded the Open Seats program, which is a training and mentoring program for anybody who's interested in applying open principle in their work and becoming open science ambassadors in their community, not just overcoming the challenges themselves, but actually helping and support, supporting their communities in adop adopting open science practices. So our origin story is very simple. Three, three of us uh, come from very traditional academic background. When I say traditional, it's also very different from all of us. I'm from India. My colleague, Yo, uh, is super international from New Zealand, from Israel, from British background. And then Bernice, who is French, who I met in, in Germany. And we connected on the fact that all of us with varied experiences go through different challenges of applying open science. I discovered open science during my PhD, whereas a lot of people don't even have a chance to identify what open practices apply to their own work. So we were part of Mozilla Open Leadership Program, which is where I know actually Graciele from. And we were part of the incubation program where uh, we operationalize open leadership in the form of program that we developed. It's a caveat to say that although we come from open life science, and initially we thought that our program would be helpful for life scientists, uh, over the years, we have become very neutral in terms of that we understand that it's no longer just about life science. We need to be very interdisciplinary in the way that we conduct our work. And hence, we have had people who've joined from completely different backgrounds uh, and non-research backgrounds as well. And we have been very fortunate in being supported by organizations that we have previously worked with and also funding that we have received over the years. What is even open science? If you all have previously heard about open science, uh, you would have come across very different definitions every time. Um, this is from 2016 Foster definition, which calls open science as a movement to make scientific research, data, and dissemination accessible to all levels of an inquiring society. The emphasis is on accessibility to all. If you all have also seen open science being discussed, open science is not one thing. It's a collection of different practices. Uh, open science includes open access uh, publication, open source software, open hardware, uh, open data management, education, citizen science, uh, across these four areas, which we will be covering in open seats. So we will be talking about open science knowledge in the form of data, scientific publication, and code. We will be talking about open infrastructure, which comes in form of physical and virtual. We will talk about open dialogue with other knowledge system where we think about community management and thinking about engaging with different people and societal actors, which includes citizen science, for example. But there's also different aspects of open science. It's not just about practices for developing research, but also thinking about how can we think about science, which goes beyond English. So it's multilingual scientific knowledge, making openly available, accessible, and reusable, so others people can use it. And it should also increase scientific collaboration for the benefit of science and society. This is actually a very small part of the really large definition that UNESCO has released in 2022. So the emphasis is no longer just on what we do in the research part, but how does it improve equity and accessibility in all fronts. Why should we care about open science? You know, like why as a researcher, we want to be thinking about open science at all stages. This is because we want to ensure that scientific knowledge is not just accessible, but it allows people who are producing the knowledge, they feel involved and they have access in a way that is sustainable. From my perspective, goal of open science is not just opening things up, it's about achieving knowledge equity for and with the, with the diverse actors who can access, produce, and set the direction of knowledge. It's no longer just about giving a seat in the table, but actually giving decision-making rights to people so they can decide it for themselves. I'm really excited to welcome you all in this program because the kind of backgrounds and applications and projects that you are bringing, they're very, very aligned with this ideology. I wanted to take a moment to say that I acknowledge that you all also come from very different uh, backgrounds. Some of you are from astrophysics, to some people are working with indigenous communities, some people are even developing uh, you know, physical, physical infrastructure. So this is 
this may feel like, do I fit in here? So the fact is Open Science applies to all kinds of projects, irrespective of domains, disciplines, or sectors. And it also applies at all stages, um, starting from if you have a research idea, you want to talk about it to someone, you want to plan your research, you want to collect your data, or whatever stage of life cycle you are in, you make a lot of decisions. And these decisions are often informed by your own biases and your own knowledge. If you are not thinking in open terms, you may miss out ideas that could embed and make your decision better. So we are thinking about how can we use open science to conduct our work responsibly. You would work with us. Initially, we had planned it for 16 weeks, but you're joining us uh, in, the, in the week four of actual timeline. So we have planned it slightly differently that you would work with us uh, across the rest of the program where we are meeting next week to talk about uh, two modules, which is tooling for project design and tooling for open collaboration. Going forward, we will be covering open science, different principles. We will also cover uh, community management. We have planned a lot of skill up session for you. I know that a lot of you do come from computer science background, but if you are new to computer science or GitHub, we have a beginner tutorial next week, but we, all of these are recorded as well. So if you, are, if you can't wait for next week, all of these are available for you to access. We would also have things like personal management and tooling for collaboration for specifically those who are thinking about open source software. And we will finish our program with uh, graduation in January. In all of our program, we have applied Mozilla Open Leadership, which is where we come from. So a set of principles, practices, and skills, which we think people would like to use to mobilize their community to solve shared problem and achieve shared goal. It's not just about solving a problem by myself, but thinking about how can I engage the people who are affected by the problem that I'm trying to solve and how do we get them engaged into owning this problem and solving it together. One thing that you would, uh, you would see over and over going forward is this sentence. Open leaders design, build and empower their projects and communities for understanding, sharing and participation and inclusion. So there are six element. One is how can I design my work that is improving people's understanding, that is helping them share my work with each other, and that is helping them to participate and feeling involved in my work. So we will be covering these six elements slowly, sometimes together, but these are the area that we would be talking about more broadly speaking. This will give you a flavor for what it looks like. So it's, of course, a four months program and it can end at some point, but it does not mean that your open journey ends. You can go on to continue working on your own project. You can stay involved in the community. A lot of our participants actually come back as a speaker themselves, as a mentor. A lot of them have actually delivered their own open science program. Um, and uh, you would have all of these paths available for yourself too. And a lot of mentors that would be actually working with you have been previously working with us, either in the capacity of facilitators or um, project leads themselves. In fact, Sheon is actually one of the project leads who's returning as a fellow to work with us um, in this program. Since 2020, we have uh, delivered eight cohorts. So this is the ninth cohort. We have also uh, partnered with NASA to work on the delivery of open science training, which I'll briefly talk about. So that's why eight plus one. Um, we have over 500 people who work with us and uh, there are many paths as I was speaking, people have taken. So it's not just anecdotal. We have quite a lot of international data, uh, international community that have joined us as mentors and experts in this program. Throughout this program, as you saw, we will be using TraumaPad for shared note-taking. This is for you. We have our website. We'll try to keep that up to date. So if anytime you feel lost, that's where you would go. During our calls, we would use, use Zoom and Otter AI for um, live transcription. So those who want to access it can have uh, live, but also we use the output from these to uh, enrich our closed captioning in the YouTube. We use Slack and email for regular communication. If you're not comfortable with Slack, I completely understand. But if you are on Slack, that's the easiest way to get to us. And it's the easiest way you can ask this question. You can find each other as well. 
Um, and emails, of course, are open anytime. We will also be using GitHub. Even if you are not an expert of GitHub, completely fine. We will be using it in a way that actually helps you and makes it easy for you to engage. A lot of our resources will be shared on slide day, Google Doc, base templates, and all of these will be made available to you. How do we know that OLS kind of format works? Uh, we were very lucky to work with uh, Paz Bernaldo, who is a qualitative researcher who worked with our community to assess impact of open seats, both positive and critical. She conducted interviews and focus group with different groups and did thematic analysis to understand is open seats actually working? Is it helpful for the community? So some of the outputs that she brought, uh, for example, as you can see on the right side, which I always find quite funny at the same time, very, very sad, where someone said that interpersonal relationships were much less toxic than they had expected. Like, why is everybody so nice? In fact, this was why it makes me feel sad because um, this person definitely comes from an experience where they have worked in places where they did not feel quite included. Um, but at the same time, we also had a Comments like the style of managing project and keeping people going and engaged was that people were very responsive and it helped them run project very well. This one is quite important because a lot of time people who come to our program are not new to open science. They have already done open science in the past, but they require a dedicated accountability space that our mentors provide so they can continue on their work. In fact, a lot of our mentors sometimes come back as mentee themselves because they have an idea that they want to spend four months building with the accountability that OLS provides. Collaboration is very difficult and a lot of our work actually talks about collaboration a lot. So this is also an output from Paz's research um, where someone says that academic positions are very competitive and it's like you publish in nature and science and you still get kicked out of academia and academic jobs are very stressful. So these are experiences of people that of course OLS cannot solve, um, but it can provide people a space to talk about their shared experience. They can talk about things that they have found useful. They can find mentoring groups, which is what something that we would be doing with you. There are a lot of things that you would learn throughout the program, which isn't something that we actively teach. It's because you would talk to different people with, from diverse background. You would talk to people who are working on completely different problem uh, than you. And that would allow you to build some interpersonal skill and help you collaborate in a way that you would not have thought. And we're hoping that these four months of working together will allow us to do that systematically. So in Open Seats, we want to explore concepts that are important and want to apply that as we learn them. And therefore, we have cohort calls and engagement with your mentor. A lot of our cohort call will, with, will end with assignments, which I would not call assignment. I should say next steps. So you know what exactly to do before you come back uh, to the next call. I want to finish with one thing that uh, if you, some of you might have already seen in the calendar that there are some call which is called Catalyst, some, some call which is called Digital Research Alliance of Canada. So within OLS9, we are running two tracks. One track is the one that you all are joining and another track is what Catalyst, which is what Taj is coordinating. So we have 10 projects from Africa and Latin America that are joining Catalyst track in order to build their um, cloud infrastructure capacity. And in some of the cohort calls, you would actually meet them. Um, and we have some specific calls, but not all of them. So from the weeks, next week onwards, you would be working on the same calls with them. So this just means that there are sometimes confusions on vocabulary. So if something is coming along your way, which says this is for Catalyst track, you can completely ignore them. If it says that it is specifically for the DRI EDIA track, that's meant for you. Good. So another good news that if you are interested, we would be able to offer you NASA Tops Open Science Patch. It is because we are working with NASA to deliver open science training, which is very aligned with our Open Seats program. You don't have to take an exam. You can simply let us know that you're interested at the end at the time of your graduation and we will send your name to NASA, they will offer you this um, batch, which is very exciting. I don't know what that batch looks like. 
with that, I want to just say that this project would never happen if we didn't have the community. Here are a few people who are coordinating with different communities, but these community members are the reason why mentorship happens, why cohort call happens, why a lot of questions are being answered on the Slack or how different people are actually finding different career pathways as a result. Um, if you're interested, I can share a lot of impact stories, but it's been really humbling to see how community has developed and they have grown in a direction that we wouldn't have imagined without them. So thank you for being here. That was my whistle, very, very fast, fast talk on what OLS and Open Seats is. But right now uh, we are here to answer any question you have, which we haven't covered. And we want to save some time for you to go in a breakout room and talk to each other. So um, tell me what questions you have. Hey, so Rena, I just want to check, um, is the caption from Otter not working? Just gonna copy that for you. Okay, I'll give you a few more minutes to talk about what you're saying, whatever question you have. And I will be creating a breakout room and now is the chance that I would remind you again. Uh, we would be, let me share my screen so I can show you what I mean. Share my screen. So we are now, if you are, if you are diligent as me and following along, we're coming to this part. We will be doing a breakout discussion. And in the beginning of my beginning of the call, I had asked you to edit your name to add W or S to indicate what's your preference today in terms of breakout rooms. So we would be creating breakout rooms depending on if you are interested in written format, you can indicate that with W in front of your name. Or if you want to speak with each other, you can put S in front of your name. Um, this will allow us to create room and put you with the right people. I know that there are some people who are French, French speakers. If you would like to be in a room with someone who speaks French, you can also add that next to your name, or you could simply use the chat and let us know. Alexis, Alex. Good, good morning, everybody. So uh, I'm basically a French speaker, but I can speak English too, but uh, less well in French. So if I can uh, get in, in a room with French speakers, uh, that uh, that would be fun. But I can speak English a little bit as well. And thank you very much for uh, this wonderful presentation. I, I really appreciate it. Very kind of you. Very, very kind of you. Thank you so much. So while people are indicating their preference, I'm gonna create some of the rooms. Can someone, uh, those who want to speak to each other in French, can they raise their virtual hand or physical hand if your camera is on? So we can make sure that we do. Perfect, simply so we'll put you there and Francois in this one, perfect. So I'm gonna try to create about 15 rooms. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna create the rooms and now let's Okay, while I'm doing this, maybe Gracieli, is there something you would like to share just so folks who are feeling overwhelmed with a lot of information know what to do? Um, <laughs> sure. Uh, I think for, I, I have heard from people from academia that those programs, open leaderships, they are very different and it can be overwhelming at first, but 
you can trust us that the process will be really smooth. Um, there will be a lot of tasks, but they are not, I, I mean, we are not here to judge you or anything. It's just that the, the tasks will be helpful for you to progress in your project. Um, so at any time, do reach out to your mentor. Mentor, They are your best friends in this. Um, and it, it is really rewarding. I can guarantee you you're going to enjoy the ride. <laughs> Thank you. I'm very close to assigning rooms. Um, I'm going to put four people in each room and we'll give you about 20 minutes to talk to each other. And um, in the in the document, we have put some prompts for you. But the most important thing for you to is get to know each other. Oh, this is a big room. Very close, folks. Um, Great. Mohammed, I have... do you want to unmute and ask a question? Or... Yes, hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, sorry for interrupting. I know you're busy with uh, creating room, breaker rooms. All but, done, uh, all done. I have, yeah, I have a very quick question. Um, so um, we're all working on our project or we have ideas on uh, what we're going to do in, in the next steps, um, at least like general plan for our projects. So my question is um, whether we're going to be working on our projects uh, like throughout the training um, or like uh, all this training, or that we need to postpone uh, our plan a little bit um, till we we got the training and we know exactly what we're gonna do. That's an excellent question. Um, so each of you have your own project, and you would actually start working on your project from today. We'll tell you at the end what you're gonna do. You will be you have been assigned to some mentoring groups where we are still confirming if you're happy with the group or if you would like to change. So if you still have the chance to say, oh, that group doesn't have the project that I'm working on um, because it's me who has assigned it and I'm not fully, you know, I'm not you, you know your work better. So if you see that the mentoring group we have assigned does not match very well, the, the purpose of mentoring group would be that you meet them every second week to talk about what you're working on compare your notes, ask for feedback. And in those meetings, you would also have a mentor who can address specific questions that might have occurred when you were working on specific question. So you would start working on your project from today. Your project is your particular project that we would like you to keep forward, but we don't want you to work in isolation because a lot of your work is about inclusion and participation. So we want you to work in groups so you can actually ask for people's feedback from the very beginning. Uh, but again, an email has gone out with a spreadsheet that shows which group you are in. If you're not happy with the group, absolutely fine. Let me know. I'm very happy to find you the right fit. Does that answer, Mohamed? Uh, yes, that's perfect. Thank you. But one more note, actually, if I can. Um, so I saw the mentoring groups. And um, so I, I noticed that there are some groups with more than three members, while other groups with only two members, which we I believe like it's gonna be, yeah. No, we, we only, I'm trying to keep groups under three, so we don't have any okay. group with more than three people. So we have tried okay. to make two, but some of the projects are very closely aligned, so we put them three. Another reason for that is that we don't have 90, uh, 80 mentors, so we need to maximize the availability of our mentors, and that's why the grouping is important, and we can't have everyone having individual mentor. Thank you so much. Great, so I am ready. I'm gonna send you out now for 15 minutes. Please chat with each other in the HackMD, I'm sorry, not HackMD. This is our um, project.
from a path, we have a few questions, which I'm going to put post in the chat. What has been your best mentoring experience so far? What are some challenges you think of in mentoring relationship? What do you think can help you address this? And finally, what would be one advice you would give to each other? I'm going to open the room. Enjoy chatting. Hey, Dawn, I can see you there. Hi, Malvika. Welcome back. I hope you had a good chat. And simply, I'm so sorry that you weren't in the right room from the very beginning. We'll do that next time. We have better plan for next time. This is a tester anyway. Um, so I want to make sure that we have the chance to have other DRA team members to also introduce themselves to you so you can reach out to them. So we have in the call, Dawn, you met Olu already and Yolanda. Uh, Don, do you want to take, take a moment to introduce yourself? Oh, sure. Thanks. I only just was able to join at 930, so I missed a, a big part of the meeting. I just really wanted to have a chance to hear what um, the, the presentation and, and the onboarding experience. Um, but yeah, just a hello to everyone. I'm Don Wood, Director of Program Management and Administration. I work really closely with Ming, Yolanda, Vanessa, Olu. And um, so it looks like uh, Olu and Yolanda or, and Ming are already here, maybe have already been introduced. And just a reminder that we're here. And if you have any program related questions, all, always feel free to send us an email at, at the program's email. And we are the people that are reading your emails and discussing them and getting answers back to you. Did I miss someone? So we, we have Don, Yolanda, Olu, Ming, and is, you said Vanessa? Vanessa, I work, we work closely with Vanessa. Okay. I don't know if on the call. Vanessa okay, no worries. On the call today. Okay. okay, so we have a question from Chitozi. Chitozi, please go ahead. A question for the DRI team. My question is, some of our projects require maybe capacity training in, in DRI, um, maybe structures or infrastructure before we can carry out our projects. You get So how, at what point should we be trained, at least to know much about them, um, about your team and um, the infrastructures that are available to us, before we can go ahead to do the training? That's my question. Yeah, thank you, Chidozi. I could answer that. Don, is it okay if I answer that? Yeah, I was actually gonna ask. <laughs> okay, you're right then. So just to let you know, and uh, you might have um, noticed in the proposal that we are offered um, Alliance DRI training to all um, our bodies of this cohort. So that's definitely gonna happen. Um, it's been scheduled and so we're just trying to firm up the dates and uh, once that has been confirmed with the facilitators, we would communicate to everyone when that would happen, uh, definitely on or before the end of the year. We also didn't want to have it too congested for you because you already have the OLS training going on as well. So we're just trying to space things out and um, ensure that it's not too too busy basically, but we would communicate to you within the next few weeks when the DRI Alliance training would, would happen. And so all of those things you talked about uh, will be part of the training you would, you'd get um, for those sessions. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does, but it's still bringing up more questions. Okay, good. Sure. That's why we're here. Okay. The next question is, does it mean we'll wait till then before we could start up our projects? So um, I'm sure your project is not all centered um, all together entirely. Um, it's not all tied up to that, but if it is, uh, well, it's good to know. Uh, so I just don't want to give you the date here because it hasn't been confirmed yet, 
but it's going to happen within the next few weeks. So that be rest assured about that. So if really your project is really tied or the start of your project is tied to uh, some knowledge or some information from from that from those sessions, uh, you would get them. But I'm I'm going to suggest you start working on other things that are not directly related to that, so you don't hold back your project. Thank start, you. Uh, no problems. Where do you live at Okay, thank you so much. Um, I think still going on the question that Chidoze asked. Um. You've answered the question, but I just wanted to say some, um, according to what the DRA, um, EDI gave us about timelines and reporting, we're supposed to submit um, a report by December. And for someone like me who is working on the project that has to do with, I think majorly my, my project is about training, training other people um, to be able to train others. So I think my major focus is about training. So I need that capacity building to be able to train. So that's why I feel when you are thinking about when the training will come up, maybe you consider bringing it up as early as possible so that we can start the project on time. Thank you. All right. Thank you for the feedback. Um, much it's noted, it's appreciated. And so it's it's a combination of things. Uh, this session with OLS is a key piece of that training you talked about. Uh, the Alliance DRI is also a key piece. So one has started and the other would follow very soon. I think what I just can't give you here would be the specific dates, but hearing all the feedback in terms of everybody wanting to get on that as quickly as possible would also inform how early we'll get that to you. So all of the feedback is taken, it's noted, and uh, I can say for a thing that you would have it sooner than later. Just noting, uh, there's another question, uh, Mohammed. Can I just take a moment, Mohammed? Keep your hand up, but I, I want to acknowledge that we're at the end of the hour, and I, if folks have to drop off, I just want to take one second to make sure that you are aware. There are a few things that I'm asking you to do, which will be sent in the email. Uh, I will be asking you to do a very short self-assessment for yourself, which is part of the program, which will allow you to also have your first meeting with your mentoring group. Um, and there are a few things that I would send your way, but just most important is the self-assessment. Um, and with that, I'm going to stop. And if you have to drop, please do. Those who have questions, please stay on. And um, hopefully the TRA members can answer that. Thank you all for joining. And I'm going to pass it to Mohammed. Please go ahead. Thank you. So uh, Olu just mentioned that DRI has a training. Would that mean uh, there is a different training, um, like, another training other than what we're doing right now with OLS? It's a different training? Or it's... So it's some, can, yeah. I can address the part that you're doing with us. Um, so the OLS has been partnering with DRA to do this cohort-based training and mentoring. Our work is a lot around open science practices and principles that you want to apply in your project. Any technical training, which are around uh, accessing the DRI infrastructure, will be separately delivered by the DRI team. Um, Olu, would you want to add to that? Yes, uh, that's what I was trying to say uh, earlier, that there are two parts to the training. This one you're having is strictly um, with OLS, uh, who's our training partner, and is around uh, open science. The other one would be the uh, Alliance, who's the funder for uh, this awards the Alliance training. Uh, so you'd go through sessions that would give you information um, on the services the Alliance offers and how you can access the services. So basically that's what would happen. There'll be two sessions for that. So it's an addition to what you're having right now with OLS. And so this session actually is strictly for OLS. It's not DRI related at all. So um, like I said earlier, we would communicate with all of you when the trainings for the DRI Alliance um, sessions would hold. And hearing that everybody wants to have that sooner than later, we'll ensure that that happens much earlier. Oh, perfect. And and um, one more question uh, to DRI team, please. So, um, so for reporting um, in our projects, in terms of reportings, are we reporting to DRI or sharing our tasks with um, OLS or to our graduate um, schools to whom we are reporting our um, tasks and project uh, objectives? 
So your reporting will be to the alliance. Who's the funder for the award? Okay, thank you. I just want to add to that, that when you are developing your own project, um, OLS will not be evaluating what you're doing. So don't try to keep it limited to OLS related learnings. Keep that as close to the real world that you want that project to become, uh, which may involve your DRI skill that you're gaining too. So I hope in the next few weeks when you start working with us, it will become a lot more apparent that the training that we are doing is really to build some skills in you around engaging with open science, engaging with community and digital skills. I'm gonna pass it to Jackie. Thank you for being patient. Thank you so much. Thanks for organizing this and thanks for answering all the questions. Uh, my question, uh, if it's not appropriate for now and I should wait later, that's fine. Um, but my question is what the difference is between the mentor that we listed in the application versus the mentor that's through OLS. I'm just not sure what the roles should be. So, what, so we ask for you to describe a mentor um, in our application that was uh, th that had two purpose. One is to find you a group with one or two other members. And one is to pair you with a mentor. So the mentor will be introduced to you next week. Uh, is there any other place you had a mentor mentioned? Yeah, yeah. that was with the VRI application. Exactly, yeah. Okay. So I just want to know okay. like, where's the boundaries between, like it seems like it's two separate people, two separate roles. I just wanted to try to understand a little bit more about that. With the OLS mentor, you would be meeting every second week alongside your mentoring group. And that mentor is mostly to guide you around, again, open science skills or any question you might have. And a lot of time, they are just your sounding partner and they want to hold accountable space so you can show up and you can make the progress that you need to make. With DRI, I'm going to again pass that to Olu. Yeah, thanks. Um, I think Ming uh, or Don might want to answer that or respond to that. I'm happy to respond to that. Um, so it's a good point. <clears throat> the mentor that um, every award holder um, has um, associated themselves with in the application form is really intended to know that you have a support system in your institution or in your network to help you navigate institutional bureaucracies or any networking and connections you need to make be really particular to your project and, and what you're planning to do. Everyone is quite different, but that that's the difference. Whereas OLS is a, is a structured mentorship program. Okay, perfect. That, that answers my question. Thank you so much. Thank you. Lum? Um, thank you so much. Um, and I just wanted to ask about the time commitment because I remember at the beginning um, when we started the application for uh, this uh, uh, competition, I remember it's like supposed to be three hours commitment or something like that. Um, but now when I added the OLS uh, training to my calendar. I see a lot of <laughs> uh, uh, all around the week. I'm not sure. I think some of them are optional. And um, also, I know that the DRI training is coming. Uh, I just wanted to know and to be sure that still not going to be taking more than that time. Um, like, you know, uh, both of the trainings um, during the week. So thanks, Salem. So I have to apologize that next week will be a bit longer than you have planned for, but the future calls are no longer than hour and half, and the mentoring call that you would have would be likely 30 to 45 minutes. So next week is longer, mostly because we are starting this program later than anticipated, and we had already planned the last day. So I had to fit quite a lot front load, which is why next week is a bit intense. But hopefully it would not be uh, more from next the week after. Um, so, <clears throat> OLS, could... sorry, sorry. I, just, I wanted to be sure that the OLS training is going to be supposed to be like uh, at least after the next week, uh, one hour and a half uh, yeah. once a week. Every That's... second week. Yeah, every second week we have one hour and a half cohort call, but um, we also have optional skill up session, which you may want to skip or want to join. Um, mm -hmm. All of these, all of these calls are recorded. So if in some weeks you are not able to join for whatever reason, 
you would have access to the recording that you can follow in your own time. Perfect. Yeah. And I also wanted to add that the Alliance DRI training, uh, the format is slightly different. So they're just two sessions, um, a few hours and two sessions, and that's it. So it's not an ongoing thing like uh, you have with the Wallace. So that Perfect. should make up. Yeah. Thank you. Then we'll try our best to make it engaging and exciting so you don't feel bored. But please keep up with us next week and we'll hope uh, we hope that it becomes easier. Azam? Yes, I have the same question about time. Uh, normally, the, the, the courses are going to be held in the evening at 4 p.m. kind of the time or no? Yeah, yeah, so that's a tricky one because Canada has four time zones, if I'm not wrong, or more than four time zones. So we have decided to keep the time UTC um, and all the calendar that you would have downloaded are in universal time. So that means we'll have to do a little bit of calculation. I'll figure out maybe maybe there is a technology somewhere that can help us navigate time zone better. There is definitely, I see Graciela saying yes. So that means that they're not at 4 p.m. Canada time. They are a different time, which is okay. 4 p.m. UTC. Uh, so the, the actual time that you joined us today is the time that we have consistently kept that, kept for rest of the cohort. Oh, so the 4 p.m. I thought, for example, today I'm going to have a, a course at 4 p.m. But suddenly I thought, okay, no, this is the time of the course. So every, every week, Wednesday, it's going to be at the same time, yes? Yeah. yeah. I will be sending you calendar invite just so you can okay. have a new calendar. But I, I, that's that's the beauty and and pain of working with international community. It's just I was shocked to see that Canada has multiple time zone more than more than I would have hoped. But let's hope we'll figure it out. Me, keep an eye on Slack. We'll make sure that we do actually announce it in time. So if you are confused by one hour or two, we still have an eye on that. We'll figure it out together. I swear. <laughs> Any other question we have? In, you were going to say something, Azam? Okay, good. My apologies, sorry. What, uh, I'm just a bit confused. That 4 p.m. is 4 p.m. Uh, what time? UTC. It's universal. So this is the this is the time around which all different time zones are mapped because there is a clock change that would happen in Canada, which happens differently than UK, where I am based. Um, so we will try to communicate everything in UTC. I see, because uh, I guess I remember that I should, uh, I'm not available for Wednesdays, but I guess- Oh I'm yeah, you gonna... did. That's, yes. a, that's, a, that's a thing that I did not mention today, but I am planning to host coffee calls on Thursdays and Fridays alternatively. So people who cannot join live, they can still come and talk to me and we can go through the materials together. So yeah. I have five people in my list who cannot join the live on Wednesday. So you would still have a chance to meet us on, on yeah. Thursday and Friday. That's awesome. I just wanted to say that I thought that's 4 p.m. EST. So that's why I said I'm not available. So I okay. confused that. So I will be available online at this time. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I will keep the informal calls anyway because there are a few people who cannot join. And maybe, you know, sometimes someone cannot join the live call. At least they would have a chance to meet us. Thank you very much. I should also turn on my light because as you would see that every day I will start in a bright day and it will go dark suddenly. So I have to learn about the time zone in my own country now. Okay, thank you so much, Rasili, for the converter and the... The Google Calendar that you would subscribe to is also um, UTC. Hopefully, it would not cause you any problem. I'm going to link this document on the top of the Slack channel. Keep If you're not used to Slack, please bear with us. But Slack would be the right place to ask all of these questions on an ongoing basis. And we'll make sure that we announce half an hour before or an hour before. So if you, if you weren't prepared, you at least have some chance to adjust your calendar. Um, okay, folks, thank you so much. I underestimated the amount of information we were trying to convey you in an hour. Thank you for staying for longer than planned. Hope you have a lovely rest of the day and I look forward to welcoming you back next week. See you, thank take you. care. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.